So, <clears throat> excuse me. All right, so this is Deus. Yesterday, this game was released. Deus Ex: Human Revolution Director's Cut. As playing the original Hevel Human Evolution, I enjoyed that game. So while I talk, I'm gonna start my key bindings and adjust everything. Everything that needs to be done. Oh, because we all love that. Well, at least if I know what I want to talk about, anyway. I don't have stereoscopic, stereoscopic 3D. I wish I did, though. That'd be really cool. DirectX 11. I have my support. I'm going to turn off uh, anti-aliasing. That always breaks my computer. Field, AO. I guess I'll leave it on normal just for a sec. Bilinear filter. Triple buffering. What's that? Tessellation. No. That also butchers my computer. As much as tessellation is really awesome, my system currently cannot handle that stuff. So, since I'm a weirdo and don't use the default keyboard setup, I'm going to start changing shit. Oh, that didn't need to turn on. Society, yes, says middle mouse. Throw, detonate. Mouse 2, X2. That's fine. No, no. And those red stuff I can't change, obviously. Oh, oh hey, commentary. There you go. I might actually listen to the commentary, because I've already played this game, just to see what the developers thought. Is there a toggle crouch, or is that what it's going to be? Looks like that's it. So, gameplay controls, automatic inventory management, show, yes, reticle, yes, aim assist, no, toggle, mm. objective highlight, field of view, that's fine, yes, audio, that's dialogues, yeah, music, subtitles on, yes, language, of course in English, I'm speaking English, am I? Tutorials, extras, let's see. Making a Deus Ex. I'll watch that later. Let's turn on the commentary. Let's see how violated my computer gets. challenge. So for the sake of plot, I'm going to be quiet over storyline and dialogue. If I have something to say, I'll probably say afterwards. Hi, uh, welcome to the DSX Human Revolution Director's Cut uh, commentary. Here is Jean-François Zuga, the game director on the game, and I'm with... Mary Demarle, I am the lead writer on the game. And I'm Jonathan Jacques Belletet, and I'm the art director. And I'm Steve Shipkowski, I'm the audio director. In place. And we'll have probably some almost. guests with us today. What so, do you mean, almost? With the first cutscene, well, 
when we started this project, we were kind of like... A few weeks of it was important to us to have links to the X1, the and, but we wanted it to be subtle. We didn't want it to be totally in your face, even though the first character you see is Bob Sage. <laughs> <laughs> but, but you're not supposed to know that. We wanted it to be subtle, so the first thing we did was to do just that. <laughs> but what is strange, even with the Die Hard fans, when they saw it for the first time, most of them didn't recognize it, even though we, we tried back and the real actor. Yeah, we, had to, we, we went out of our way to find the real actor. We thought it was important to keep the continuity. Forcing our thought hand. the hardcore fans would really like it, and I think the plan was to keep the guy really in the shadows. Yeah. 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 Um, and I remember I was with uh, Dominic Demers, the lighting guy. I was darker, put it darker, and it was all constantly a debate of how much of his face we should see or not. <laughs> that was more challenging than anticipated. Fortunately, thanks to David, I now know where to look. Yeah, so and now uh, it's uh, the cutscene where we're introducing uh, Adam Most Jensen. Actually, this TV news is probably the only TV news that has this some tre animated 3D in it, uh, which was the, uh, the original plan with uh, um, those TV news. But uh, as we figured out the scope of what we had to produce, and we had so much yeah. to do, and with all the other cutscenes and stuff, we quickly realized that we wouldn't be able to. Yeah. We wanted them all to be 3D. I know that when I was writing it, I wanted it to be respect, like, Major, first you wouldn't even know you were watching the news, you were actually the seeing tarmac. like the stuff going on at no, the, be at the, the uh, Capitol building, exposed. and then slowly you realize, oh, it's news. Yes. But right, right. what we kind of envisioned understand. doesn't always work. Good night. Yeah. Yeah. Idiot. And then with Megan and her necklace, that was another very important part for us because from a story perspective we wanted to establish no, me, um, something but that was a part of her, something that made her and human, and that would have on this relevance because eventually we had all these plans that like you might find it in the FEMA facility on, where she'd been taken and, and stuff. Um, so it was a very important thing, but, but I think things. that <laughs> we didn't yeah. necessarily communicate that. No, right this, this is one of the Kept few little times that me and you they didn't so talk or something about it because so usually things went pretty it. well in terms of what you wanted and what I wanted. But uh, yeah, so at one point it was like, we're, you know, we had our, our design down and everything. Uh, Megan was pretty much finished in terms of what she would look like. And I think it was either you or Jeff who came up and was like, where's her necklace? I'm like, what necklace? <laughs> You're supposed to have a pearl necklace. I'm like, really? And I'm like, the whole thing's done. She has this big collar and she's all zipped up. And I'm like, where am I going to put it? It's like, well, just put it over her, her clothes. I'm like, you don't put a necklace over her clothes. But we ended up doing it, which I think looks I mean, uh, yeah, and no, and no. And I, I personally think it looks tacky, but it's fine. But I mean, it works. It, it works in the sense that it, it 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 did the purpose that it had to do. And so now I'm in the game. So now we're in Megan's room. Yeah, this is Megan's office. Um, obviously, pretty much the first uh, in-game part of the entire game. Uh, this is um, this was a pretty important room for us because uh, since uh, the clutter is really important in the game, we wanted to make sure that it was there straight from the get-go. So this is one of the really, really good rooms in the entire game where it's uh, extremely cluttered. Uh, that pillar of the art direction was uh, quite well executed. And the cyber renaissance is, uh, you the, can already feel yeah, it. You, yeah, you can really start feeling it and all that. Um, it's not the biggest one. But it's not, For cyber yeah. renaissance, it's yeah. not the biggest one, but definitely for the clutter, really it's one of the good ones. Now, I have no idea why everybody's so messy in this game, though, and that <laughs> nobody cleans or, or, or uh, you know, puts their stuff in order, but doesn't really yeah, matter anyway. When, when the, uh, the end of the world is coming, you That's have true. other priorities, That's right? true, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like living your life. Like living your life and <laughs> leaving pieces of paper everywhere and stuff like that. Uh, they probably don't even know what paper is anymore anyway, because they're in their phones and stuff. That's why the paper is all over around me, like... We don't, don't know this. we don't know what that is. Uh, and, yeah. now, and now if we look at Megan, like, her idol stance is quite awesome. No, like, yeah. She's a, yeah, she's I've, a, she's I've a sexy always kitten. Hated that. I've a sexy always kitten who wants to go to the bathroom. Back. Exactly, and I've always hated that. And, and quite frankly, when I play the game, I like to explore and, and find the different items, even though I know where everything is. Um, but And so I purposely don't look at her the entire time. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I think it's almost borderline sexist, really, just the way she's standing no, I think there. She, she's, it's out of character. It's out of character. Mm -hmm. But it's yeah, also it's like, totally you know, it's a woman character. waiting for a man and she's like, <laughs> you yeah. know, like, it's just, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. 
but sometimes yeah, sometimes we, we yeah. know it but we realize it too late <laughs> yeah, exactly. and in this room too we like mary uh, alluded to uh, we had several pieces of information that I so internally we've always referred to this section of the game as the walk and talk uh, and it actually wasn't the Where'd original opening there, for the game well, we had a completely it. different idea yeah. for the opening to be more of a training mission where you're infiltrating your own company as part of a security test but there was a lot of uh, a lot of discussions among the team and a lot of people didn't think we could pull that one off and and ultimately we ended up kind of taking a new direction on it yeah, and yeah. and working in this kind of and vein it, it became the the, the the walk and talk and actually was a, a nice way to have a good uh, show don't tell moment yeah. establishing the world and the characters and right it, it, the exactly and at first I was because I really liked the original idea so I wasn't really keen for this the direction but then as I started working on the script I really did kind of start to like how it shows off the world mm -hmm. but I remember the first draft um, of the script I think it was Joe who pointed out that we were putting a lot of techno babble in there and it sounded, it sounded like much a, more star, it sounded star like it was yeah it sounded like it was like a big spaceship that they were running you know <laughs> Looks like a spaceship. So, so we had to kind of go through extra passes to, to fix that and, and to and lengthen it. Here to the right, it's cool. Like we yeah. have one of, of our artists with he wanted to have an homage to the six million dollar man, which uh, was really uh, really cool and showing off that we're not that young. Yeah. <laughs> That so girl is such a bitch there. Right? <laughs> she said. Well, we had uh -huh. to establish all their characters right off the bat as fast as we salary. could. As fast and it was could. another uh, nice addition about having the Versa Life logo. Yeah. And yes, and the arm. I remember a lot of discussions <laughs> about this arm because it plays a very important part well, later in the game, well, and we really needed to, to, to show showcase it. it yeah. and, and, and that's why he has one sleeve and on the other side yeah, doesn't yeah. have anything. <laughs> and I remember also with the artist thinking about what the arm should look like because right. it needed to be recognizable so for when tongue would have it but at the same time we, we didn't want it to be like I don't know just like purple or something you know what Absolutely. I mean it's, it needed a subtlety and at the same time something yeah. that you would remember that's true and that scene like with the, the claymore explosion yeah, it's it cool took it, it's really cool but it took so long before it worked like the the dolls were always uh, staying <laughs> in the <laughs> air or not moving or just falling on the ground yeah. it takes time yeah. And if I remember correctly, it's they're they're going to get in the elevator nice. now. And uh, there was, I think, a lot of technical issues, first of all, with the elevator. But one of the things that we also wanted to do was we wanted to kind of um, focus. As they get into the elevator, you'll see suddenly we get the camera shot. Mm -hmm. And we kind of wanted to have this theme running through the game that this is Eliza who is controlling the cameras and watching Jensen all the way from the start. Spying. And spying on you. So here, this was a good moment and uh, my one regret was it was such a great idea and I think the cinematic director brought it up yeah. but then just unfortunately never carried it through with many of the rest of it yeah. it so was, Eliza was watching uh, it was me that a very time. good idea that uh, okay we ended up not really carrying, <laughs> yeah. carrying through well, you know, we got so when much you've got to a do. project this big, yeah. Well, they talk about the dog, right? The, the, the famous dog. Oh, that's dog, right? right. The dog. The dog was Adam's dog. Yes, that was something when we were working on one of our yeah. earliest demos We're of the game, that. and we had to fill the world. One one of the script writers um, said we should have this email about Adam's dog, and it should be dead. And and I was, you know, at first my reaction to that was, oh, that's terrible. But as long as it's not a cat, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> and dogs, dogs are fine. And they then we dog. were able to take. <laughs> that and carry it through much more. Now we get one of our favorite characters. Yeah, for yes. Sure. And this here, sure. like what is really cool is that just like a real guy, he just looked very not too subtly Fix that to Megan's yet. ass. <laughs> and like yeah. quick glance at the <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> really, I, I know, think it had uh, yeah. authenticity yeah. too. Yeah. Well, the fact that he also did it in front of her ex-boyfriend. It definitely everything. tells you a lot about the character exactly. right off the top. Like he's, he hasn't even spoken a word yet and Swat. just that action and speaks volumes as to his relationship Sorry, with, with Adam. Yeah. Yeah. It's Andreas... Uh, and, on, uh, Andreas yes. Asperges. Asperges did. Yeah. And actually it was quite fun because I think from a writing perspective we really wanted to Pritchard to be this this dick, Ooh. and Andreas was so good. He would he come in and he would do this, and after every take he would finish it and go, God, I hate that guy. 
And now we hear the, the Unet theme. The Unet theme. Yeah, instantly. I really thought when I heard what Mike had done, there was it, there was a chance right there to kind of bring a little homage Touch. to the Unatco theme, and we felt like this was sort of our new Unatco, and we wanted to just give a, a little nod to it. And I found it was a great way to showcase into the the beautiful room that uh, John and his team designed yeah, here. Yeah, no, no, and it worked really well because we just yes, has that point now. But when we first walk into the corridor that leads into David's uh, David's uh, office is really one of my favorite parts of the game. Just the way you crescendo with the music at that point. And this is one of uh, my favorite rooms in the game as well. And uh, just everything just culminates together and it's just, it's just yeah, like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's very emotional. It's so yeah. emotional. It's really strong. Yeah, yeah. 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 I think for the story, but also for what we try to put together as a team, it's all there and I think it's very emotional for us as well, just as a... Um, in relation to the project, you know. Right, absolutely. Environmental malfunction. Laboratory subsection 6. All lab chiefs, please report in. We oh better boy, not take any chances. Not tonight. Use my elevator to get down there. You know the code? Yeah, 0451. Let me know what you find. Athena, get someone to shut off the damn racket. Yes, sir. Richard, where's Megan? She reporting yet? Her GPL implant shows her moving through the microchem labs. I think she's running. Damn. Must have been a serious equipment failure. Can you get eyes on her? I'm trying, but the IntelliCams aren't responding. There's interference coming from somewhere. Find out what's happening, Jensen. Hurry! Richard? Richard! I can't play the commentary. Go, time for some combat. So here uh, in this uh, room, we see the for the first time the two black ops uh, killing a scientist that he falls. Uh, of the the guards and everything and that has been a crazy ride just to get this thing working we were on the verge of cutting it mm. because it was really hard to have those scripted events mm. uh, working with the environment and with the physics and everything uh, it has been a nightmare and I fought until the last minute yeah. to make sure that that we we uh, get this in and finally it worked it worked it really was, well it was I, okay. I don't think most people realize most gamers uh, uh, how hard it is just to put things like this I mean depending on the engine that's being used but how hard it can be to have those scripted events going it's just one guy been pushed over uh, yeah. you know railings but it's a uh, especially when you don't have the tools and mm -hmm. <laughs> if you don't have the tools and on the audio side we worked really hard like for me it was a huge thing to try and really sense um, the show don't tell of the terrorist attack happening so like as you're walking and you're coming across dead bodies in that. I thought it'd be cool if we could hear the the sort of uh, the the violence, the violence, and the the killings and all that before you see it. And then when you'd come around the corner, you'd see the bodies laying there, and it would kind of put it in context. Um, it didn't come out as hot and sexy as I hoped and wanted, but it came out really cool. And again, there was certain limitations we had to deal with that was behind it, but. Uh, 
the team came together and pulled out something that was really close to what we wanted. They found me. So the goal of this cutscene was really to surprise the player and, and get him. And I've always hated that shot of Megan because it makes it look like, what the heck is she doing while this terrorist attack is going on? It's supposed to be, is she a part of it? Whatever. She still should has have been to go to the cowering in fear. But for the most part, I think this cutscene did a pretty good job of conveying the horror of what happens to Adam in this scene. Yeah. I remember feeling bad for him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. It's almost rude. And you can really understand all those arguments. That I really hated. The, I really don't like the green acid. It's like so like Saturday morning cartoons. Like, like it's all green. Like yeah. Ghostbusters. Yeah. 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 And here Namir is going to come to us. And originally it was supposed to be in gameplay. And actually we, we had... Move the camera and everything. Yeah. We had a working prototype. But hey. So yeah. With uh, the opening credits. Uh, actually uh, it seems like people really liked it. Uh, uh, our original inspiration was to kind of uh, 
the James Bond movies, the six million dollar man's trying to to showcase this augmented character and everything. But we wanted it to be really stylish, really like mm. a James Bond movie. Sometimes they, they they go beyond, they go in the abstract. It's very stylized. Exactly. Yeah. It's actually more stylized than what we did today with this. But uh, no, it works really, really well. I think Steve A, the sound, the, the track oh, that's on him, Beatles, is yeah, I think By the way, that's a pig, sorry, cut you, but when we see uh, the thing cutting the flesh, it's actually a real piece of pig oh, really? that was bought. The, um, when I saw the visuals, I mean, I was really impressed, they were really cool, and um, I thought it was going to be really important to, to, to sort of nail it with the right music tone, because um, I think something that wouldn't have worked as well might have undersold the... Uh, the power of the scene, but it was really powerful. With when I s put the music to it, with the visuals, I was just kind of like, "Yeah, this couldn't work any better." Mike right. uh, McCann, the composer, just really hit this one out of the park, and the reaction we got when people saw it and heard it, they loved it right away. Even I think uh, Cold Tooth, the people who produced the uh, yeah, who actually uh, put they, it together, they came back right away saying the music track is just selling this whole thing is yeah. bringing yeah, it all together. Yeah, it really was. And I remember the dialogue in this. It's so funny because the dialogue is so short and so simple, but you needed it to convey basically some of the hinting of what's going on with yeah. Sarah forcing the augmentations, but also we wanted it to sound like a real like surgery and the kind of thing. So I remember giving it to one of the writers on staff and saying, could you, you know, kind of write these opening lines and stuff. And he was going on and, and researching all about operations and CT, CCT scans mm -hmm. and all these things. And, and in the end, those little details are so important just to make it and pop it. Even if you can't hear it, it works. So yeah, uh, Jensen's coming back from the dead, and now uh, is going to come. Uh, well, we see now that Eliza is still watching him, yeah. and now we'll see him uh, close his shades uh, for the first time. Now he's closing on himself. And he's closing. Exactly. That was the that was the idea, right? That he's kind yeah, of like yeah. now he doesn't really like what's happened to him, and he's uh, he's a bit kind of self conscious. He's self conscious and making a little shield around him from and the world. The eyes are the windows yeah. to the soul, but the eyes cover the them up. The yeah, he exactly. protects himself. Adam, it's David. You in the building? Just entered the lobby. Sorry to pull you out of sick leave so soon, but uh, we've got a situation. A breaking out of Milwaukee Junction factory. Meet me at the helipad. I have to see Pritchard first. Something's wrong with my retinal enhancement. Frank's on the second floor in the tech lab. Make it quick. People's lives are at stake. It's been tough. About time. What happened? You get stuck in an air duct on the way over? Yeah, nice to see you too, Francis. Something's wrong with my retinal display. Can you fix it? If it's what I think it is, probably. Of course, it might be. Oh, looks like your left and right imaging processors weren't completely in sync. But don't worry, your sentinel health implant will kick in soon, repairing any damage that might have caused. Your retinal display should be fine now. Its recognition software won't be picking up hostiles yet, but you should be seeing radar and targeting reticules. Biomedical data too, if you're in pain. Right. We done here? Because Seraph is waiting for me at the helipad. I know. Radicals have broken into our manufacturing plant and taken hostages. Maybe this time you'll actually save people. Ooh, you. If you get a problem with me, Pritchard, why don't you just say it and get it over with? Why no, Jensen? I don't have a problem with you. If anything, I blame myself. The mighty Pritchard blaming himself. 
It's gotta be a first. I'm the one who told Sarif we needed a physical security team to protect us. If he'd read my report closely enough. Wait a second. Are you saying it was your idea to hire me? Not you, Jensen. I wanted Dynacor, Sharp Edge, or Bell Tower. All the top private security contractors were on my list, but Sarif wanted somebody in-house. And so did Dr. Reed. I suggest you leave Megan out of this. Why, Jensen? It's no secret how close the two of you were. And let's face it, you'd just been fired from SWAT for that massacre in Mexican town. No one was about to hire you. You really have to stop getting your news from those Pikus blogs, Francis. They only confuse you. The point is, if Sarif had listened to me, we wouldn't be having this conversation. But Megan, God love her, always did have Sarif's ear. Sarah's here is going to be hearing a report about violence in the workplace if you keep this up. You really feel like continuing? Point taken. Adam, how close are you to the helipad? Almost there. Good. Because SWAT's about to turn this into a PR nightmare. Meet me in the chopper. I'll brief you as we go. Welcome back, Jensen. Didn't think we'd see you around here for a while yet. You know how it goes, Malik. Duty calls. Don't I know it. I was in my wingsuit halfway to the top of the Renaissance Center when I got the 911. But you? Six months is a hell of a short time to come back from the dead. You sure you're ready for this? Find out. Roger that. The boss is already on board, arguing with the DPD's tactical response team. They've got the plant surrounded, but Mr. Seraph wants you to go in first. Are you all set here? Because the sooner we take off, the better it will be for everyone. I'm ready. Great. Then let's get airborne. So yeah, uh, the cutscenes are pre-rendered, but originally we were planning them out to be uh, totally in-game and everything and uh, as we were progressing and realizing what they would demand and the tools and everything that we didn't have uh, set up properly and everything we kind of realized that we would never ship the game like that so we had to rely on the pre-rendered cutscenes. And there's a funny little thing here the that the, uh, if you notice when Jensen in comes in. into the, the VTOL in the cutscene, he's, uh, he's so wearing his jacket, and then when we start inside the so plane, insane. he's not wearing the jacket, the and it was kind of a big problem where between cinematics the and in-game, they were saying, you know, something no, fell through the cracks. So, for audio to try and help that out at the end of the cutscene, you actually kind of hear a cloth rustle, and it's supposed to be Jensen taking his coat off and throwing his coat on, point on, the, uh, on the floor Adam, to try and help sort of uh, bridge the, uh, the gap that you know it was too late we couldn't fix the cutscene and we couldn't put the coat on him here it didn't make sense Sanders. so that's kind of how we dealt him with there. that. And this is an this an is a pretty major Adam. scene with David so Seraph. It's really the first time you ever this. get to but he did meet him exactly in person. And uh, I remember the casting right. for so David Seraph. We went through a lot of different um, ideas about what kind of person this should be. It. Should he be really corporate? Should he be this? Go, and uh, I remember we had a couple contenders. Legal and when Steve Shellen came in, and the way he played it, it wasn't exactly what I was picturing in my head. But I remember going, "Wait a second! It's like..." It does kind of, it totally works because we wanted a very charismatic a guy who's a very Lethal friendly guy, is. but we wanted a but corporate remember, CEO they do kind have of guy. Hostages. And yeah, I, uh, I remember walking out of that fire. casting session going, you remember what oh my goodness. Like in there? What 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 is going to happen? And I think the decision we did it early enough in the process that the decision to cast him totally affected how we wrote that character from that point on. Sure, I Both are pretty lacking in ammo, so. Give me something with distance. 
If I get too close, I'll take them out personally. Just try not to break anything expensive. The Typhoon should be in the factoring labs, but Pritchard will tell you more as you go in. I've got him running comms. Terrific. Anything else? Keep your eyes open for hostages. Free them if you can, but the Typhoon is your number one priority. We developed it for the Alphabet agencies, and if we don't deliver it to them intact and still a secret, well, I'm sure you'll get the job done right.